Good evening and welcome to this special PBS NewsHour coverage of the New Hampshire primary. I'm Gwen Eiffel. And I'm Judy Woodruff. They finished second in Iowa, but tonight Bernie Sanders and Donald Trump have claimed victory in New Hampshire. Democrat Sanders scored a resounding win over Hillary Clinton. It guarantees him a majority of the 24 delegates at stake. And Republican Trump won big in a crowded field, with John Kasich finishing second. Trump will take at least nine of that state's 23 GOP delegates. In the battle for third place on the Republican side, Ted Cruz, Jeb Bush, and Marco Rubio continued in a tight race late into the night. As the results came into focus, the candidates came out to claim victory and offer concessions. Donald Trump was triumphant as he appeared before a crowd of supporters in Manchester. We want to thank the people of New Hampshire, right? Do we love the people of New Hampshire? You know, I said it, and I said it even a year ago. I said, I think I'm going to do really well there because I'm here a lot, and it's so beautiful, and I love it so much, and I love the people, and I said, I actually think they like me a lot, and then all of a sudden, we started getting numbers in, and everyone said, how come they like Trump so much, but I have so many friends up here, and they are special, special people, so New Hampshire, I want to thank you. We love you. We're going to be back a lot. We're not going to forget you. You started it. Remember, you started it. Meanwhile, Bernie Sanders revved up a jubilant crowd of his supporters in Concord. And let me take this opportunity to thank the many, many thousands of volunteers here in the Granite State who work so tirelessly. <laughs> Our volunteers work night and day made phone calls and knocked on a heck of a lot of doors. And we won because of your energy. Thank you all so much. And I want to thank Julia Barnes and our great campaign staff. Together, we have sent the message that will echo from Wall Street to Washington, from Maine to California. And that is that the government of our great country belongs to all of the people and not just a handful of wealthy campaign contributors and their super PACs. And now we go to our political director, Lisa Desjardins, who is reporting for us tonight in Manchester, New Hampshire. Lisa, you have had your ear to the ground talking to voters, talking to candidates. What have you learned in the past several days while you've been in New Hampshire that explains what we saw happen tonight? Dramatic results for those of us watching, I think, from outside of New Hampshire. Maybe not as dramatic, Gwen, for voters here. Going to the polls this morning, the names I heard from voters were the same names that are doing well tonight. Let's start with Donald Trump. Voters who, who told me that they were supporting Donald Trump told me that they were doing it despite the fact that they think he might be someone who's offensive. They think that this country needs someone who is going to be a strong leader and who maybe who will offend people, especially offend, in their words, America's enemies. I think the strong leader label also might apply in a way to Bernie Sanders. When I talked to Democrats who voted for Bernie Sanders today, and there were many, many of them, as the seems results are showing, uh, uh, they said they like that he has been genuine and he has pushed for his ideas even when they were remarkably unpopular to today when they're gaining traction they see that as a kind of strength those voters who chose not to vote for Hillary Clinton said they felt that she is someone who's trying too hard to say what the people want to hear versus strong leader type is what they see in Bernie Sanders not to oversimplify things but I think that was a very real theme for voters here in New Hampshire today and Lisa were you able to tell what it is that people want the strong leader Leader to do it, what's it, the source of the unhappiness the frustration the anger it, were you able to figure pick that up from people yes 
It is absolutely the economy, Judy and Gwen. Here in New Hampshire, uh, incomes are far above average in the, of the country. Unemployment levels are low, but yet many voters here don't feel like things are getting better. And even more so, they're worried about their children's future. They're worried about student loan debt, which is very high in this state. And they don't see anything changing to help that situation. They think new ideas are the only way for, uh, for things to go get on a better course for them. And they say they weren't hearing new ideas from other candidates. Now, now all of this said, it should be remarked that John Kasich also had a big night. He won, I think, with voters who were looking for a more stable, proven leader, but someone who also they related to personally. He went out, shook hands in this state, sat by firesides quite literally, and I think that made a difference here for him. Uh, I, I also think it's really going to be interesting to watch the Marco Rubio, Jeb Bush race with uh, for, for number three with Ted Cruz. I just came from Marco Rubio's session speech. Fascinatingly enough, right off the top, he said, this was my fault. It was my poor performance in the debate that led to this. And he apologized to his followers. He said it won't happen again. It was a very interesting moment for Marco Rubio, a sign that he is going to try and reverse course or kind of get back on track after New Hampshire. That's what I want to ask you about a little bit, Lisa, because Marco Rubio did an unusual yeah. thing in admitting that it was his fault. But we also see a lot of other candidates who didn't necessarily benefit, like Chris Christie, who was hit the, hit the weapon against Marco Rubio the other night. Do we know who might go home after tonight? Well, we know that Chris Christie is taking at least a little bit of time off the trail to sort of recoup and take another look at his campaign. Uh, there were some false reports that he was announcing a suspension earlier tonight, but instead what's actually happening, we're told, is that he's just taking some time to take a look. I, I do think he's got to he's got to really take a hard look at what's ahead, especially going into South Carolina. We haven't talked about Ben Carson or Carly Fiorina very much. They're at the very bottom of the New Hampshire pack. And I think as far as staffing money, and momentum go, those two candidates have to really uh, make some difficult choices probably in the next few weeks ahead. Okay, well, Lisa, thank you so much for your contributions tonight and all week long in New Hampshire.